My name is Coach Olivia Carter. I'm also a certified strength and conditioning specialist um, through the NSCA, um, and I currently work um, as a strength and conditioning coach uh, with SUMA Health at CVCA, um, working with the high school and middle school athletes. My name is Dale Sopcich. I am a SUMA, Suma Health uh, exercise physiologist. Um, I'm a certified uh, strength and conditioning specialist through the NSCA, uh, also a certified personal trainer. Um, I am also a uh, strength and conditioning coach for Barberton High School and Middle School. The three movements that we're going to be working on in this first phase is the overhead squat, a good morning, and a high front plank. You would want to do this uh, at least three times a week. To start you off with is a overhead squat. We're going to use a dowel rod. Uh, a dowel rod essentially is the same thing as a body weight uh, movement, uh, but this is going to help you kind of perform the movement in a good pattern. So what you're going to do, we're going to start with our feet about shoulder width apart, toes and knees pointing straight ahead, have it grip about a little bit like twice as wide as shoulder width, so we're going to go ahead go really wide right there and what you're going to do go ahead and bring the uh, dowel rod above your head arms are locked out and you want to make sure your biceps are covering your ears in this in this area here from here why don't you turn uh, sideways so you can see a profile view when we're going to start this squat you're going to start by keeping your uh, your arms locked out looking straight ahead head in a neutral position and your torso in a neutral position uh, begin it begin the squat by essentially gradually pulling your hips back, bend, bending or flexing your knees until your, your uh, thighs are about parallel with the ground. Once we're in about that position, you're gonna pause just for a quick second and you're gonna extend all the way up. Hips are coming through and you're gonna get a good lockout out of your glutes. So we're, with that, we'll also repeat. Go ahead and, why don't we, we'll go ahead and we'll give you five reps so that we can see the, the, the full range of motion here. Going down into two. Good, go all the way up, good. Push back down into three. There you go, we got two more. Going up to four. There you go. Going down and up into five. One common mistake we usually like to, we tend to see is of a drawing forward here in the in the arm and in the torso. So for the most part, when you want to be able to uh, go down into that squat, be sure to always pull back here with your arms and you get a good squeeze in your scapula. Uh, that way you can have a good lockout in your shoulders so you have good stabilization. Do not have access to a PVC pipe or a dollar rod, a good other option to use uh, is a at home item, a broomstick. Next movement we're gonna work on, uh, this one is called a good morning, it's a good posterior uh, activation uh, exercise, meaning all the musculature in the uh, back of your body or the posterior part of your body. Uh, what she's gonna start with doing is she's gonna place the dollar rod or whatever you have available to you on the uh, traps. Go ahead and get a good squeeze here, just squeeze really hard. You're gonna be able to create what's called a bridge, if you will, or a uh, the musculature of her trap muscles, which is the muscles that are on the top of her top of her, uh, her back here. So as she has that position in her upper body, go ahead and actually turn turn all the way around from 180 degrees, face forward. Uh, we're in that position here. She's going to have her stance a little bit wider than than, than shoulder width. Shoulder to hip width usually is a good. Uh, place to start depending on where you are comfortable with within the movement. So right now we're about shoulder width apart. What she's going to do uh, is have her knees and toes also point ahead, point straight ahead on this one, and then go ahead and face uh, profile view here. Okay. From here she's going to start the movement by drawing her hips back into a hinge position uh, by pushing her hips back towards the wall, keeping her uh, her back flat, torso up and straight and neutral. Head is also neutral as well. She's not bending her knees as much as on this one since it's considered a hinge, not considerably a squat. From there, she'll pause for a nice, nice split second and she's gonna extend all the way up. Hips are coming forward, locking out in her glutes and locking out in her upper back and her uh, and her back muscles are there. So go ahead, let's go ahead and get five more reps there. Draw back with your, with your glute and your hip. Neutral spine, extending all the way up. Notice how she goes down nice and slow so she gets a good stretch in the posterior, in the hamstrings. Okay, from here, go ahead and actually give me five reps. Draw your hips back towards the wall. Good, extending all the way up. Good, on this also distribute your weight towards the back middle of your foot so that way you have good equal balance throughout the whole range of motion. Um, also, not too much of a forward lean onto the toe. We wanna to be able, like I said, have a nice flat foot so that way we have a good activation in that posterior uh, segment of the body. They're coming up. Let's go ahead and we're gonna do a core stabilization and strengthening exercise here. Uh, the traditional plank is called a high plank, which means you're gonna be on your on your hand or on your on your hands rather than your elbows. So on this movement, 
Uh, we're going to start by having her be down in what's called a quadruped position, which is go ahead and get down on both knees. Okay, hands flat on the floor. Okay, if she's going to start here, this is your starting position. Uh, from here, in order to get up into the plank position, she's going to extend both her knees out so that way her toes have contact with the ground. She's going to have a nice neutral spine, uh, head neutral as well. She's also sucking her, her belly button into her navel, that way she's activating her core. Go ahead and extend up there on your toes. Good. Now notice on this movement here, this is actually all, all you're doing on this movement. You're not, you're not moving anything. The only thing you're doing and focusing on is stabilizing your core so that way you're not slouching. So go ahead and actually dip your hips down a little bit. This is definitely what we do not want because uh, obviously you're not going to be able to activate your core as much. Go ahead and lift up a little higher. This is also what we do not want. You're not going to have a, as much activation in your core musculature if you're too much flexed in your hips or if you're too much extended in your hips. So in this position, she's doing a great job. Go ahead and stay looking good. And on this one, what you really want to focus on doing is providing force into the ground with your hands and your toes and also uh, making sure in your hip position that you are doing what's called a tilt. So that way you are actually activating all your musculature in her, in her torso. If you do have any limitations in your shoulders, uh, a good modification to use, uh, if you have a countertop, if you have a, a chair, uh, anything that is essentially is elevated from the ground, um, we're going to actually we would use a, a bench to, to show you the modification. So, same exact um, setup as far as getting into the position. The only difference is that she's going to have her hands on an elevated platform. Go ahead, Olivia, why don't you put your hands there on the bench, extend your legs out right there. The position here is best to be as over your shoulders, over your uh, wrists as possible, so that we're getting as much resistance onto the core as possible. You never have to uh, modify this further. The higher you are, the easier it is, and the lower you are, the harder it is.